Okay, folks, today we're taking a look at Windows Whistler build 2250, compiled on the 28th of June 2000. Let's get into it with my ugly mug, because glossy LCD panels, yeah! Build 2250 was released on the 13th of July 2000 at the Professional Developers Conference in Florida. It was the first build to be released to testers in both the professional and the then current for the home edition version, the personal edition. This is also the very earliest of known personal edition leaked builds of Windows Whistler, which would obviously, like I mentioned, it would be later renamed to the home edition. Now, for those who didn't know, build 2250 is actually one of the first builds to no longer support the 486 processor and the HAL for the Silicon Graphics Visual Workstation 320 and 540 systems. So you no longer have support for those in this version of Windows Whistler. Some of the changes in this build were mainly system deep. They weren't really too visual, but there are a couple of things worth taking a look at. But one of the most minute differences is the change of the Windows folder. Now, previously in Windows NT based operating systems from Microsoft, the Windows folder was actually not called Windows, it was WinNT. But in this build of Whistler, it was changed to Windows, which was what was used by Windows 95, 98, ME, vice versa. So that was a pretty interesting change. Ever since like Windows NT 3.1 in 1993, it had finally been changed to just say Windows to unify the operating system development, of course. This build has a different looking welcome screen comparative to the predecessors of Whistler that had the uh, Neptune style of login screens. But this design that it has actually took effect and didn't change until the build after 2419 which would be 2428, which is when Luna was introduced into the operating system. Some tweaks were made to the user interface compared to that of the Windows 2000 user interface, such as the themes, the control panel, the out-of-box experience, which we hope to take a look at in this video. The Explorer got the task panes off on the left-hand side, and even the setup has remnants of Windows Millennium inside of it, which is pretty interesting to take a look at. This build also has the professional theme, and it also has the two-pane start menu, which would eventually make its way into Windows XP. I'm also hoping that I can take a look at the start page, which is reminiscent of Neptune. If you've ever looked at Neptune, it had a page that was very similar to this, which would be an active desktop, and you would show you recent files and folders, programs, so on and so forth. This would be kind of an example of what it would have looked like had it had been implemented and finalized, by the way. Assuming everything goes to plan, this will be the computer I use to install a Dell Dimension XPS T500, which features a slot one Pentium 3 at 500 megahertz with 512 megs of RAM, and the GPU is an ATI Rage 128 Pro. This computer probably was made around late 1998, early 1999 as a high-end computer from Dell, featuring the then new Pentium 3, like I mentioned, on slot one. So we'll see what happens. All right, should be set to boot from the CD, so we'll see what happens here. Don't remember if this is bootable or not, or if we'll have to install Windows 98. Guess we'll find out. Oh, yes we do have a bootable disk. As you can see at this phase of setup, it still mentions Windows 2000, which makes sense. Whoa, the setup program has detected that you're about to install an evaluation version of the Microsoft Windows 2000 operating system. Whoa, I should be scared, guys. <laughs> setup Windows 2000, now press enter. Windows setup can automatically configure most aspects of your installation requiring little or no input from you. Let's try that, because why not? Let's see if it'll actually figure things out. All right, so we've currently got FAT32 on the drive. We're gonna go ahead and see if we can just, oh crap, that's not what I wanted to do. Well, I guess we're installing Windows Whistler on a FAT32 volume because I had no opportunity to tell it no. So that's fun. Well, either way, the rest of the setup is pretty much just like Windows 2000. It's not really worth filming. So I'm gonna turn the camera off and I will come back once it reboots. All right, so it's rebooted. As you can see, it still has the Windows 2000 professional boot screen going on here. And here we go into the 
next portion of setup. Should be the windows. Yep, there we are. There is what I was just mentioning earlier, the Windows Millennium style of setup process, but it still mentions Windows 2000. There's a heck of a lot less stuff going on the sidebar and whatnot. Um, I think later builds, they implement more into the sidebar and they put like fancy graphics down here, like the Microsoft logo, like Windows Millennium Edition did and so on and so forth. So, yeah. Otherwise, it's basically the if you've ever done a Windows 2000 clean install, this is basically identical to that. So it's nothing fancy. So you just as well assume that, yeah, it's going to be basically the exact same feel as Windows 2000, other than obviously the background is different. So not really much to show here, unless, of course, there is something interesting to show. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the camera back off and I will catch you all once this installation has finished. Okay, so the setup has completed and now we are booting up into Whistler 2250. So we'll just see what happens here. See if we actually uh, have any drivers. Oh yeah, we do. Check that out. Obviously, applying computer settings there as you probably just saw and it had a code name Whistler banner. Of course, down here it identifies as Whistler Professional. And here we are at the desktop. So of course it still has the main theme of Windows 2000, which makes sense given all the bugs with the themes and whatnot. So cool, we got the out of box experience for 2000. That's just fantastic. As you can see down here in the start menu though, if I don't drop my can of Mountain Dew, you can see it actually says code name Whistler on the start menu. There was a previous build that mentioned it said Whistler 2001 in the start menu, but this one just says code name Whistler on it. Are we in 256 colors? Oh yeah, there's a thing. Yeah, we're in 256 colors. Can we fix that? Okay, that's much better. Okay, there we go. Let's get the resolution up a little bit as well. Okay, so obviously as you can see, there's a theme preview coming soon. I believe this actually finds its way into build 2257. So that makes it pretty interesting to look at. Otherwise, everything else is the same, well, for the most part, as Windows 2000. Interesting, there is the professional theme in there, but the preview is somehow broken. That's fascinating. Only well, the one color scheme, of course. And uh, it doesn't look like... Oh, there is a clear type option, smooth edges of screen fonts. So that is there, but I'm going to leave it on the classic theme so I can just apply the uh, clear type. I believe we do have to patch the theme in, uh, the theme engine to get the theme to not look so broken. I wonder if it actually works if you don't do that. Oh, it kind of does. Obviously, we don't have the new start menu applied yet, but you can see the new start button with the uh, different looking Windows logo, the different font down there. But I don't think, um, I mean, it looks like the classic theme. It's not actually patched yet to show the professional or the watercolor like styling. I don't think that's been implemented yet, so I'm gonna have to do that. But I'll just put it back on classic for the minute. Yeah, you can see there's some issues as far as the rendering goes. In the meantime, we'll actually take a look at the new start menu. So here is the properties for obviously the start and taskbar. And as you can see, it uses a Windows 2000 picture here. If we go over to this new start button over here, you can see it mentions other stuff TBD, but there is a little Easter egg to get the start menu to work. If you press Alt D and then press apply, it will actually apply the new start menu. If I can get this mouse to go over to the apply button. And here it is. So let's move this stuff out of the way. So it's obviously a little bit more different looking, but as you can see, it's got the two pane design. It's got the internet and email shortcuts up there and it's got your typical my documents my pictures my music my computer my network places stuff that you would have seen in windows xp of course you have the more programs menu over here so that would make sense oh there's all that stuff so yep that's all there another spots of this operating system we'll obviously see the new explorer design so one of these areas is the control panel which as you can see has a new look and feel, and it has the category view. 
that is reminiscent of that of Windows XP. In fact, all the categories are basically here. And you can also see the classic control panel view if you so desired to, to look at all the other stuff. I believe one of the things which was in our prior build was called the hot pluggable devices option, but obviously it's just the unplug or eject hardware thing. So that makes sense. I wonder if this speech 5.0 thing actually does anything. Ah, uh, nope, it does not appear like it does. Debug assertion failed. Run DLL32.exe. An error occurred while work while Windows was working with the control panel file sappy.cpl. Darn. So it doesn't look like that was ever finished. I believe we can also go into my computer here and we can also take a look at some of the other functions of this new UI, such as the task pane on the left hand side here. So you get your details pane. And it's very similar to like that of before. So as you can see, you get your details view. We also have links to other places and some tasks such as your system properties, or in this case, it shows the properties of the disk. But if you just click on that, it just shows you your system properties, which as you can see is build or version 5.01.2250. Well, I was about to go into the registry to try to fix things, but it looks like it's actually working now. So this is a very early version of the watercolor theme. It doesn't have the stylized look like the later builds did. This is just your flat color. Start menu obviously looks the same, although the start button has a nice new looking color, which matches the start menu, of course. I wonder if we can turn on the um, welcome screen. If we go under user accounts here. So here you can see this is all new. So we should just be able to go in here and use the welcome page for fast and easy logon. And now let's see, I don't remember where we log off. I think we might just have to do it this way. No, it doesn't let me do that. Of course, why wouldn't it? But we might have to do that from the other start menu. So if we turn that off, nope, it doesn't look like that actually did it. So, oops. So where would be the option to log off? That might be interesting. We might have to just restart the entire computer for that to actually take effect because I don't know if it'll actually let us log off through this uh, new start menu design. Hmm, bonk. Maybe I'll do that because that could be kind of interesting. Unless it's supposed to be down here hidden out of view and I'm just not finding it. No, it doesn't appear like it. Okay, well that makes sense then I guess. So now let's try to set that hidden Neptune derived start page. And I mean hidden because it's a hidden attribute. So now we need to go ahead and do this. I don't know if it's gonna let me, but let's give it a shot. File or folder you're opening contains web content that may be unsafe. Well, yeah, obviously I wanna do that. Stack overflow at line seven, oh, perfect. Well, as you can see, I uh, tried to work here. Wow, where did all the icons go? Oh yeah, this was a new feature where it would hide the icons underneath this arrow, but the balloon sound effect is just like the Windows exclamation sound effect or something like that. So that's pretty interesting. Okay, so we should just be able to like do this. Um, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, should be able to just make all these files not be hidden. I think we have to do it individually, do we? So if I do that real quick, just make these all not hidden. I don't know if it's gonna let me do it when they're in use though. It might not. No, it doesn't look like it will. Well, that's fine. We can just uh, do a, a different wallpaper, turn off the active desktop. Oops, that's not what I wanted you to do. Um, yeah, there we go. So turn active desktop off. I'm gonna unhide all these files if I can, and then we'll try this again. Well, unfortunately I was not able to get it to function, which doesn't surprise me because by this phase, most of everything that needed to make it work was removed. But of course it was shown on a different website. Uh, Paul Thurot actually did this. So this would be what it would look like had it have been completed. So you can see it would have basically been your start menu replacement. Of course, this would have, like I mentioned, take place or took place inside of Neptune mainly, but it didn't make its way into here. But I think it, but by looking at that image, I almost wondered if that log off function of that actually, actually worked here. So let's see, let's reapply it. And uh, let's see if we can actually use this to log off. Nope, it just loads an about blank from Internet Explorer. Ah, this mouse, I need a mouse pad on this desk because this mouse doesn't work whenever you need to do anything. Damn it. 
errors occurred. Do you want to continue writing the script? Yeah, definitely. Because yeah, that, that, it's all kinds of broken, so it doesn't work. So we'll just leave it as that. So, okie dokie then. That explains that. I almost wonder if we can get the log off link to appear if we just enable the guest account. Is that something that we can do? Yes. So, sure. Does that actually make things function? No, there is no log off link. All right, well, then I guess we'll just uh, do a reboot here. Ah, it's a mouse. So I guess we'll come back once this reboots and we'll obviously take a better look at it because, well, why not, right? And here's the welcome screen. So there we go. That's an interesting uh, Microsoft account that was left over. Should just be able to log into the administrator. As you can see, it actually logs in on this screen, tells you applying your personal settings and all that stuff before it drops you into the desktop. So that's pretty cool. Well, where did all the icons go? They disappeared from the notification area because you hadn't used them in a while, really. So for this video, that's all I can really show because that's about all I really have shown and what was available with this build that made it worth making a video on. So I guess with that having been said, I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Ah, this mouse. Oh, now we get a log off option. Oh, it must have been a bug. Well, I mean, this operating system is full of bugs. So what did I expect, right? I think it just looks like the standard Windows 2000 log off box. Yeah, it does. So... Yeah, I'm going to get out of here. If you guys like this video, well, you know what you do. You click the thumbs up button. And the other button works as well if you didn't like this video. If you want to see more videos just like this one, there'll be a red button down below that says subscribe. So I'd recommend you click on that so you can see more videos on my channel when I upload them. So there we go. I'm going to get out of here. And thank you all for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Mm -hmm.